Welcome back to Angular 20 tutorial. So in last episode, we have completed signal. So what is signal? How we create signal? How do we update the signal? How do we access the signal? Now we are going to focus on control flow statement. So what is control flow statement? So if you know any programming language, consider like you already know the JavaScript. So how do we write if else and for loop in JavaScript? Either you belong from the .NET or the Java background also, you already know the if condition, if else condition, else if condition, at the rate for, uh, sorry, normal for loop also. So whatever the if else and the conditions you know, or the loops you know, same we can do in the HTML only directly. So that is nothing but control flow statement. So let's say condition wise, you need to render some element. So you will use at the rate if, at the rate else, at the rate else if, or some element you want to iterate based on some array. So you will use at the rate for loop. Fine. So let's see that. Let's create one more component. So for every topic, I'm creating one uh, extra component so that you can also find the code for that particular component, particular topic in that particular component. Fine. Let me just quickly create ng generate component, control flow, enter. So this will create my component. Now again, we have not created the routing. So we need to render this component into our app component. So again, we have to go to app.ts. Here we need to remove this and we will import our control flow statement. Fine. So this is we have imported. Then in HTML, we need to render the tag of it app hyphen control flow. Fine. If I save. Let's reload one more time. So now you can see control flow statement is coming over here. Means our component is able, we are able to render our component. Now, so let's open this. Let's open side by side. Now, again, one more thing, like if you are new, please do like and subscribe and join my WhatsApp group channel also, which is mentioned in the video description. Now, so control flow statement. So let's say you have a button and on that button click, you need to hide some, hide or show something. Okay. So what we can do is, um, let's create a table. Inside that table, let's have a TR. TD, one more TD we will have inside this. Here I will say a paragraph. This is sample para. Okay. So I have a paragraph over here. And in second TD, let's create a button. And here we will say show P. One more button I will create that will be hide P. Okay. So see. We have this paragraph. If I click on show P, this paragraph should be visible. If I click on hide P, this paragraph should be hidden or removed. So this is our task. So we can, means basically hide and show we are going to do. So we can achieve or we can complete this task by using control flow statement. How? So we have two buttons, right? One for the show and one for the hide. And this paragraph we need to hide and show. So for that, we will create a variable. Let's go with a normal variable. So let's say is para visible data type will be boolean and i'm by default i'm making it false so if this variable has value true then only we need to render this paragraph otherwise we have to hide it so in the html directly we can write at the rate if then your condition so your condition will be if this variable has value true so if this variable is equal to is equal to true curly bracket Right. If you remove this at the rate, this is normal if else condition. So just in the angular, if you have to write if else in the HTML directly, so you will write at the rate. Okay. And this paragraph will go over here. So see now by default, this variable value is false. So this condition won't get satisfied. So this line won't execute. See this paragraph is not coming. If I change this variable value to true, now condition will get satisfied and our paragraph will be visible. See, got it. So this is nothing but your control flow statement at the rate if and your condition. If this condition gets true, this line will execute. Otherwise, it won't be executed. Now, we just need to make it dynamic. So we have two buttons. On respect to button, we just need to change the value of this variable. Fine. So what we can do, again, click event. Show P, just a function I'm creating. Function name, round bracket, curly bracket, enter. What we need to do in this function, we just need to make this variable value to true. If it gets true, it will be visible, right? 
then second function hide p in this function we just need to change the variable value to false we could have done it with the single function also but considering like everyone should understand so that's why i'm going with the two different function and this function i will put it over here fine so see we have two different function and two different button we are calling calling the respective function on the respective button in case of show p we are just uh, changing this variable value to true and in uh, hide we are making it false so see now by default it is available if i click on hide see that paragraph is hidden if i click on show it is visible hide and show let me show this also inspect so by default you can see paragraph is available over here if i click on hide see that paragraph that p tag completely got removed it is not like it's not display none it has actually completely removed that from the dom okay so this is how our if else work let's say if this variable is true we are showing this but let's say if this variable is false we need to show something else so what we can do at the rate else and round bracket and here we will instead of paragraph let's say h3 we will have and we will say this variable has false value okay so if this variable is true my paragraph will render otherwise this s3 should render see now by default this is rendering has false value okay if i click on show see paragraph is coming if i click on hide see this paragraph has false value got it so this is your if and else so if this condition whatever the condition you pass over here if this condition gets true this line of code will execute again so many again inside this let's say you have a span tag also sample okay in else also let's say you have small tag so many parameters so many html elements also we can have so if this condition gets true whatever the code you have written inside this curly braces all will render otherwise it will go to the else block okay see small tag is coming and paragraph is if i click on show see sample and the sample para is coming okay so how you know what do you know from if and else how do you write in the programming same thing you can do it over here just you need to use at the rate symbol okay so this is your at the rate else if now that uh, ladder if else ladder we need to see so for that what example we can take um, let's say starting month name data type string is equal to i'm picking it as empty let's say in this variable if we have m uh, let's say jan so we need to print january if it is has feb so we need to print february like that so what we will do this variable will have either whatever the first three character either jan or feb so but in ui i need to print the complete thing february in january some complete name i need to print so let's create one more tr sorry tr td now here let's say at the rate if condition first condition will be if this variable has value jan so what we need to render let's say we have a span tag january okay then at the rate else one more condition is there again if right if start month name is equal to is equal to feb then we have curly braces so again we will have one span and here we can have february something again like this we will have so many condition okay january february then we will have mar and here we will have marh march apr april like this so condition will keep on going fine let's see now so currently this variable has feb value so see february is coming if i change this or let's create one more text box over here and we will bind that variable to the text box let's say this variable we need to bind it to the text box so that once the text box value get changed it should assign to this variable also so we have to use ng model so if we have to use ng model forms model we have to import 
and this variable we need to bind it over here square bracket round bracket ng model is equal to double quote variable so see now by default it is february so february it is if i say mar see march is getting printed if i say jan see january it is getting printed spelling mistake is there but see got it if i pass something else currently it is not showing something so if i provide the wrong input so finally an else block should be needed no? so like this and here we will say span wrong input fine let's see now okay if i refresh if i provide something see wrong input if i provide proper value i get the c okay epr understood so this is how you can write the if else ladder also just like how you might be writing in javascript or any programming language right so same like that just make sure you add the at the rate symbol otherwise it will be string only fine now so this is your at the rate if and at the rate else let's say we create an array of city so city list colon string of array so string array symbol like this we will have pune Mumbai, Panji, Nagpur. So you can see we have got array of city. Okay. Now what are the elements we have in this city array? We want to render in the UI in let's say in ULLI. So now we have array of list, right? So we have to render it somewhere. So let's create one more TR, TD, let's say ULLI. So when we talk about UL ally, our ally should be multiple, right? UL should be single and inside that UL, we should have multiple ally. So we can use at the rate for loop over here like this. And we, we will iterate at the for loop on this. Okay. So now you are familiar with something like this. In JavaScript also, we have something like this. So similar to this, we have it over here. And which element we, we, we want to iterate? So ally. So ally will go inside this and item in item we will get the one 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 element whatever the element just like a for loop iteration we do now or for each loop whatever you are familiar or in loop also so item so in item we will get the each element it's like of iterating now so every for loop it is iterating we will get the different different item see now we got Pune, Mumbai, that many ally got created. In our array, we had those, those many four elements. So my four ally got created. Let me show you this also. See, we have got one UL and inside that we have got four ally. Clear? So whenever you have to iterate the element, let's say you have array of something and that many times you are in UI, you need to show something. So you will use for loop to iterate on the array. So this is one example. Let's say we have to create a dynamic option in my drop down so select will be there inside select we have to use again at the rate for loop city list what do we need to iterate option so option and inside this we will print our item see now we will have a single drop down with multiple option got it so this is your at the rate for loop okay now this was a your array of string let's try to create array of object let's say student list now i'm going with any because i i want to explain you like how we create class and interface so let's go with this inside this we will have array let's say name a a a city Let's say Pune is active colon false. Fine. So we have this one object just like that. One more objects we will create. So oh sorry. This is first object. Let me just copy paste. Fine. So we have let's say four element. Let's change the values.
and only CCC is active. Okay. So see, we have created a student list, which is having an array of object. Now let's say we want to display this information. So whenever we have array of object, student list, employee list, product list, teacher list, whenever we have list of some particular related data, we can show that into the table. So see, how do we show that? So we will have a table. Inside that, let's say we will have a T head, then TR, TH, this is for adding, let's say serial number, then TH, let's say we have name, then we have city, TH, then we have status, okay? So this is our header. Let's save it and check it. So see, header is coming. Now we want to iterate our dynamic TR. So we will have T body. Now in T body, TR should be multiple. We should not have multiple T body. Only TR should be multiple. So at the rate for loop, now we will iterate on the student list. Now over here, we will have TR. And in that, how many TH we have? Like that, how many TD we will have? Okay. Let me format. And here, so you can see we have to show the serial number. But if you check the array of object, you don't have serial number. But from the for loop, you get the serial number. So you see dollar index is there. So this is nothing but your serial number. Interpolation and you will use dollar index over here. And in remaining, now what does item contain? Item will contain first element, but first element is an object. How do we access an object? So item dot name over here. Okay, then again curly braces, curly brackets, item dot second parameter, second key that is city, third parameter, item dot is active. Let me copy paste. I don't want to make spelling mistake. Fine. Let's see. See, we have got array. We are showing the student list properly. Again, like the bootstrap I have not installed. So normal border also something is not coming, but you can imagine, right? So if we have installed the bootstrap, if we add the table class, it will look proper. Okay. But we are able to create dynamic array. But one problem is here that index is starting from zero. So here we can just make it increment by one. So now your index will start with one. Clear? Now, in the last column, we have got false, false, true, true. Now, as we are a developer, so we will be able to understand what is true and false, but normal user won't be able to understand it. So instead of showing the Boolean value, we have to show active or deactive. Fine. So now inside for loop, in this TD, again, I will use that the rate if. So at the rate if, if this variable is true, so if student is active is equal to is equal to true, here I will have H6 and here I will say active at the rate else. Let's say H6 D active. Okay. So inside the for loop also, I will remove this now. From our student, only CC is active, other is false. So in our for loop also, we can use our at the rate if also. Okay. What the, it needs just the condition. So it doesn't matter this condition is we are comparing with any variable or we are comparing with the for loop instance also. Fine. Let's see. Now you can see deactive, deactive and active is coming. Okay. So now this will make sense to the user, whoever is using the application like CCC is active, others are deactive. Got it. So inside the for loop, we can use if and else also. Okay. So this is how we use control flow statement at the rate if, at the rate else, at the rate else if, at the rate for loop. Just like this, one more thing we have at the rate switch, switch case, like how do you know the switch here? Just like that switch case, we have it over here, but I will cover that in next parts, okay? So for now, this is very basic what you should know about control flow statement. Normal if else, if else ladder, and your for loop. This is your normal for loop on the string array, and this is your for loop on the array of object. Fine. I hope it was clear to you. Again, I'm repeating, please do like and subscribe and join the WhatsApp group, which you have, which I have mentioned in the video description. That's it.